if you've been sowing it to a person, you got the right to go back and say, yeah. it ain't that you say that I've been sowing it to you. The prophet ought to imagine, no, because you've been sowing it to him. He would say, my son is evil. Come on here. Because she might didn't know God. She might have a personal relationship with God. But she had a personal relationship with the person. The God in the person. So she said, my son is ill. She knew how to work the principle. I'm going to take y'all to the scripture because y'all looking at me. Saying, oh, apostle, you tripping. No, no, no. I'm going to take you to the scripture. Look what it says. Say, her son became ill. He grew worse and worse. Verse 17. And finally, he stopped breathing. Say, stop breathing. Stop breathing. Stop breathing means he died, right? God said, will you sit here and die? Listen what he said. She said to Elisha. It is that she said to God. She talked to Elisha. Because she said, I've been sowing it to your life. So I'm going back to the person who I've been sowing it to. Come on here. What do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Listen what the prophet said. Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and he laid on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Oh Lord. See, that's why you got to know God. And when you got a prophetic voice, because see, that word Lord is capitalized. He was talking to Yahweh. Yahweh is the giver of life. Yahweh is the one that breaks promises, that he made promises come to pass. Lord. Yahweh is the one that will make a way out of nowhere. Yeah, she said, I know who to go to. Yeah. I'm going to go to the one that know how to hear his voice. Yeah. Oh, my God. Will you sit here? She said, then he cried up to the Lord. Oh, Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy also unto this widow I am staying with? See, now Elijah is reminding God, wait a minute, now you told me to depend on her. Now tragedy has come to her house. So now I'm coming back to you. Because you got to understand. See, you try to get it twisted. See, if I do wrong by you, God's going to get me. But if I do right by you, and if something go wrong that I can't fix, I go back to the person who called me. That's it. That's it. That's it. My Lord. Because see, you trying to too busy trying to get folk back yourself when you don't know the principles of the kingdom. Because when you know the principles of the kingdom, you understand that you sit in the right posture. My Lord. My Lord. See, you got to understand. The scripture, when the scripture said, he reminded me about David and Saul. I mean, David, yeah, David and Saul. You got to understand. When Saul was trying to kill David, come on here, David could have been, he even could have killed Saul. He even had a little clippings of his hair. He said, but I will not touch God's anointed. See, when you sit here and die, because you got to understand, even if somebody doing wrong by you, they still are wrong by God. And David had enough, I'm trying to show you the principle. He had enough sense. If you read the text, it said David was, I mean, Saul was throwing javelins and almost killed David. He was just moving that way. I would not fight God's anointed. See, God is looking at you to see what are you doing to his anointing. Mm. Because see, God was looking to see what David submit to God. Mm. See, how you going to submit to God when you're trying to fight his anointing? Mm. See, see then, what, 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 what's the trip about it? David had a right to fight back at Saul. Because Saul was trying to kill him. Come on. And if he had enough sense to say, I would not touch God anointed. But what sense you look like trying to kill somebody? God called him to help you. So you got to understand how the enemy will you sit here and die? Because if you sit here and you keep doing what you're doing, that some of y'all, you ever see the boomerang? Because when you throw it out there huh, to take somebody out, huh, if you don't align yourself up, huh, that thing going to boomerang back to you. That's it. That's the spiritual law. 
See, God is saying, because we listen to these negative, these strange, say strange voices. Strange voices. These strange voices. How do I know it's strange? Because, see, you don't read your Bible, so you don't know what the words say. So you listen to these thoughts in your mind, and these thoughts in your mind telling you it's God, and it ain't God. And so you ain't reading his word to know what the words say. So you trying to say it's God. How can you say some God when you ain't submitted yourself to God? My Lord. Come on, y'all. This is where you're submitting yourself because if you're going to live by the prophetic word, come on here. You got to submit by the prophetic word. Uh oh, my Lord. Oh, my Jesus. How you going to live by something that you ain't submitted your life to? Wait a minute. I won't submit to leadership, but I'm going to pray to God. If you can't submit to what you see in the natural, you praying to another God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The Bible said, how can you love somebody you, you can't see, but the person right in front of you can't love? This is the word. I got to love you first. And when I can love you, I can love him. But if I can't love you, I can't love him. That's why when we say we're going into prayer, but you got a problem with the person who you see with your eyes, you ain't going to pray to God. Because before you go to God, say even before you give your offering, go get it right with your neighbor first. That's what it say. Before you give your offering. Because what you're doing is you just giving something. He said, because how can you love somebody you can't see? Then the person who you see on a regular basis, you got a problem with. See, this biblical principle, this is the kind of teaching going to make you grow up and shut up. This is the type of teaching that's going to make you come from out of the pre-K and come on on into the first grade. Come on here. I'm talking about you skipping grades. You're in the first grade, but now when you leave, you're in the sixth grade. Come on here. Um, we, we ain't talking about going from the first grade to the second grade. We ain't talking about leaving from the kindergarten and you leave here, I'm in the sixth grade now.